Uh, maybe not. All right, I guess then. Um, I think I, I think I'm maybe I'll pull up an article or two. I think there are a couple of articles um, that I wanted to read related to Queen's Gambit, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let me see if I still have it somewhere. I had a link to an article. Let's see. Um, I was I was actually going to keep going and re read this article. One second. Where is it? There, there's some article on Queen's Gambit, the, the show that I wanted to watch. Okay, there we are. Okay, here we go. Change the scene. All right. Okay. So, everybody, you can now see yourselves on chat. We are going to be reading this article. This is an article in the Sydney Morning Heracle... Sydney Morning Herald, you guys. Uh, if you aren't familiar, of course, Sydney is is a city here in America. It's it's a great city. So it's just a local small small town newspaper writing an article here here in America. All right, here we go. Um, obviously, you guys, I'm joking. I'm joking. Of course, Sydney is uh, is one of the major cities in Australia. I think it's the biggest city, although it's not the capital of Australia. Of course, the capital is Cranberry. So um, I don't know why Cranberry is the capital, but it is. Um, at any rate, let's 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 see. Okay, so here's an article on the Queen's Gambit. It's called "I'm a Grandmaster and the Queen's Gambit has all the right moves." It's an article written by Sir Sir Ian Rogers. He is a Grandmaster. I believe he was the first Grandmaster from Australia. Um, so let's 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 keep going. All right, let's see. Okay, the Queen's Gambit is a se is a seven part period drama about a chess player in the 1960s. It is also one of the most watched shows on Netflix worldwide and in Australia. If these two statements seem incompatible, you must be too young to remember the time. Half a century ago, when Australian television featured a nightly high-rated chess program which followed the erratic American Bobby, Fischer, Bobby Fischer's world title match against the reigning champion Boris Spassky, um, against Boris Spassky. Uh, before we get to the Queen's Gambit, what I would say is that it's worth noting, I don't know if this is still true by modern metrics, but at the time, the, the match between Bobby Fischer and Boris Spassky, it was the most followed sporting event. Uh, the viewership was the highest of any sporting event, at least up until recently, I believe, um, if, you, if you do the comparison. Best so it really was a big, big deal. Hey, I heard about Petrosian. Are you sure he cheated? I mean, they said the same thing about Bobby Fischer versus Spassky, and it wasn't true at all. Fischer never cheated anyway. Have a great day, P.S. Amazing stream. Bobby Fischer never cheated? What are you talking about? Bobby Fischer never cheated. What are you, what are you even talking about? Anyway, all right. The Queen's Gambit, based on a novel the same name by Walter Tevis, um, offers a fictionalized version of a female Fischer and her rise from a difficult childhood to take on the best from the Soviet Union during the Cold War era. Like Fisher, Beth Harmon, played more than convincingly by Anya, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, learns Russian to better study the games of the best. Like Fisher, she dresses fashionably. Like Fisher, she refuses sponsorships from organizations she doesn't support. Okay. Um, okay. Let's keep going. However, however, Harmon's struggles with pills and alcohol are, are all on her own. And, and at first, it seemed that her addiction to Librium, a 1960s sedative, enabled her rather than hindered her brilliant play. Nowadays, Harmon would be banned by WADA's drug testers long before she reached the top. Fair enough. Okay, let's keep going. Um, the Queen's Gambit has generated plenty of praise from better qualified television reviewers than myself. The backdrop of U.S. and international chess tournaments is rarely seen on screen, but offers the tension of any high-stakes sporting contest. Taylor Joy, who did not play chess before the role, but immersed herself in the game and looked a believable player in the series, commented, I got invited to a very secret world that is super cool and really interesting. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. Certainly, I've... I've Certainly, I found myself well entertained with the small number of chess technical errors easy to overlook. Indeed, one of the weirder concepts, Harmon visualizing positions on the ceiling rather than the chessboard when calculating, might seem just like a cinematic device, but it is also characteristic of some top grandmasters, um, such as myself. Yet this writer also experienced a weird form of deja vu. I felt that I was watching a weird fa fairy tale version of my own chess career, which began 10 years later than Harmon's. I, too, surreptitiously read chess books in class where the coursework was not challenging. Thanks, Ivanhoe grammar. Jeez, Ivanhoe? Man, a terrible, terrible book, man. <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, it's like I, Ivanhoe, Beowulf, all these ridiculous, all these ridiculous pieces of literature. Um, I, too, needed to borrow money for my entry fee to be paid back after a prize was secured. Thanks, Frank Mirback. Like many players whose self-worth hung on their chess success, I was deeply tormented after a key loss. 
Harmon drowned her sorrows. I didn't eat for two days. Thanks, Grandmaster Dragojub Valmirovich. Like Harmon, sleeping on someone's floor was not uncommon. Too many to thank. However, Harmon, apart from making a much better fist of learning Russian than me, um, climbed the chess ladder faster and higher than I could ever dream of. In the series, despite inevitable setbacks, this prodigious teen rises through the ranks with ease, only slowed down and almost brought to a halt by her other addictions. Harmon binges may seem over the top, but plenty of grandmasters have been slaves to alcohol. However, only a handful have managed to stay world class while addicted. Very true. Okay, let's keep scrolling. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Tra travel to tra tra travel to top top European tournaments of that era was just as exciting as depicted in the Queen's Gambit. However, Harmon's final showdown in Moscow was for me just a little too real. Was for me was to, in Moscow was for me just a little too straightforward. Though the lavish venue and big enthusiastic crowds were quite realistic. Why before her most critical game did the radio in her hotel room not turn on at 2 a.m. and stay on full blast for an hour? as happened to me and other foreign players competing in the USSR. Why did Harmon discuss key variations about her adjourned final game over a hotel telephone line, which was likely monitored? Oh, wow. Um, wow, that's, uh, I'm amazed that he said that. The answer, of course, is that the Queen's Gambit is not a biopic, but feel-good fiction. And so despite being a rare female player in U.S. tournaments of that era, Harmon somehow avoids opponents who make demeaning pregame comments or react to a defeat with fury, or withdraw from a tournament if they happen to lose to a woman. Or perhaps because the series' chess advisors were both male, former world champion Gary Kasparov and U.S. chess personality Bruce Pandolfini, such occurrences were not even contemplated. I should also mention that I have only once seen a player stare at their opponent as much as Taylor Joy does in the Queen's Gambit. That person was a 13-year-old Kasparov when I played him in France in 1976. It was a seriously annoying habit. But a solid stare plus good moves proved a decisive combination. So I'm glad I never had to take on Beth Harmon. Okay, wow. Um, what an article. Yeah, and this is, of course, Ian Rogers, Australia's first chess grandmaster. So, I mean, in general, I think, I mean, it's a very good article, very good take. A lot of this is true. Like, you know, in the modern era, like all this stuff with like, you know, the radio turning on or things being, things happening didn't, you know, this doesn't happen anymore, but this was very true. It used to happen all the time. Um, so much different for sure. Um, all right, you guys. So pretty good article. Let's get back to, um, let's get back to some chess. If there's anybody who wants to play, um, how much do I gain? I gain zero. I can't play this guy. Um, let's find someone to play. Um, Gotham chess, I can still play. 